Shalom, shalom, shalom. Peace and greetings. Happy Sabbath to my Afro-Asiatic brothers and sisters. We want to say um, good morning to our Hebrew Muslim saints. Um, once again, we just say good morning to our Afro-Asiatic brothers and sisters across the planet. The whole planet, not just the earth, the whole planet, up, down, in between, left, right, front, and behind. Before I get into this, this is Morning Monkeys and Parrots. I am your host, Jose Omar, and this one is called Idle Chit Chatter. And I asked the most I to come in, because I, I pray every day before I go, like, I'm up, I'm up at 3 o'clock. Uh, I actually got about one. I always go to bed early, guys, because there's just nothing else to do. There's no reason for me to go shopping. Let me get, let me get this together. There's no reason for me to go shopping. There's no reason for me to go buy a car. There's no reason for me to go buy a house. There's no reason for me to go put on a whole bunch of fancy clothing. And go find some regular nigga and some regular bitch nigga. Hyena or jackal. Go to a high place that's prophesied in the Bible. And watch you howl like owls. Who ow, ooh, 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 And act like zoo animals in a circus. And your common bond is religion. Which means circa. Which is the root word for circus. Which also developed the church and circus circle and amphitheater in Rome where he killed you niggas. I'm gonna play a clip from this guy from the days of Noah. Big ups from the guy from days of Noah. I watch you a lot. Uh, we say thank you for your um, for your information, for your research. I highly recommend you check this guy's page on Days of Noah. And my foot started itching, my right foot. Somebody must, 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 must want me out of here or they want to get rid of me or something, I don't know. I've been feeling that a little bit. But we'll get into the details of my purpose of being on this planet. All right, black woman. Okay, black man. Black males and black females. That's four different groups. In case you can't comprehend, you ever been to school? When we were in school, and they said Jill had six apples, Jack had two, John missing three, Larry's missing 20, Kenny's missing 54, and Steve near 150. How many apples do you need? I'll wait. You want to see who's broke and not poor? Cause I'm hearing the I'm hearing through the spirits and through man and through and the abyss and all levels of heaven and hell, even down to earth and into my consciousness. I can feel uh, you through the screen, through your not talking, through your interactions and not interactions. But I can feel your your engagement is not pure. Now, if I see a flow, and I see your flow. I'm looking at a flow that's already strong. It doesn't need me. Whether I'm rich, broke, poor, fat, skinny, uh -uh, it don't need me. Why? It's already in a flow. Gone. It has its momentum, its speed, its height, weight, its cool, shoo, gone. Why would I get into that flow unless it has something to add to the shoo, flow? This is Morty Monkeys and Parrots. I am your host, Jose Omar. The broke nigga. The broke nigga. And I'm going to tell you a story behind this, this, 
this, this, and this lion. Now these are spiritual gifts. There's a difference between niggas giving you gifts and niggas, Mr. and Mrs. Conquistastic, giving you gifts and puffing you up so you look all pretty. Yeah, look at me. Yeah, look, look, look what man did for me. Look at my traditions and look at how the dishes did for me. See, I ain't broke, nigga. I ain't broke. I got hoes. I got niggas, man. Look, I got clothes. Look at me, nigga. Yeah, yeah, look at me. Yeah, 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 yeah. But meanwhile, while these females is building you up, in their heart, you still a broke nigga. But to the other females, you look good. Oh, he got money. He look like T Pain and he looks like this. Never tell a motherfucker that it was your mama who died, your brother that died, your sister that died, your uncle, your grandfather, your brother. Somebody had to die so you can look fly. And then get on Facebook or whatever, whatever, and spit venom on me, come on, I'm broke. Come to the bird, man. Get to know. Get to, matter of fact, don't even come to Pittsburgh. We go to we go to Mexico. We go to uh, Cali. We go to Texas, Florida, Atlanta, any city you want. And ask them. No matter where I went, my pockets was empty, nigga. Empty, nigga. You know what I do? I sit here. What I'm doing now, I like me a square, roll me something up, cross my legs, huh? I bend down, I say, Father, let, let your will be done, because my will is to be in your will, because your will is the best will, because when I'm in your will, I never lose, and you be glorified. So, Father, how about may I glorify you today? How may I praise you today? How may I go out? And go amongst your earth and pick up her gifts, put them together, Father, called alchemists, and hand it over to you. Say, thank you, Father, for the wisdom of alchemy. Thank you, Mother Earth, for the materials. Thank you, wisdom, on how to put this shit together. And thank you, Omar, Hosea, for the wisdom to know how to make it work, nigga. Who broke? Watch your motherfucking mouth. He's broke. He ain't got no money. Bitch, you ain't got no fucking money, bitch. I am money. That's why I got a social security card. Hold up. Let me tell you something. To you rich bitches. Always talking shit. Dirty ass house. Stinky ass pussy. That's some raggedy hoes, man. This is ridiculous, man. How do y'all call? How do y'all go around calling people out their fucking name, and you don't even know the bitch that's in the mirror? You don't even spend time with that nigga in the mirror. You don't really find out how broke you is. But we're gonna let God, we're gonna let my man from the days of Noah tell you how broke you is, and then we're gonna let the devil tell you how broke you is, bitch, bitch ass niggas. We're going to let the whole world tell you how broke you is. You're not only poor, you're broken and poor, and you have fun being broke. Not money, no money broke, little bitch. But your whole essence, your whole existence is broke. And with all that money and jewelry that you got from people who are what? Broke. Just like you. You know what it is? So everything you talk about, monkey, everything you do, monkey, come from a broken way of life. A broken mentality. A broken heart. A broken spirit. And you broke from God. And you broke from your earth. You broke from wisdom. You broke from your family. You broke from friends. You broke from reading. You broke from comprehending. You broke from your own fucking spiritual gifts. You sit here and I can feel your fucking energy, man. Didn't I tell you every time y'all put curses and spit venom, I get better?
the gods gave me this for the courage of a lion. I didn't go look for this. I got this trying to get a broke cell phone fixed. Yeah, my phone was broke. I want to go get a motherfucking fix. I want to go get my phone fixed. You know what the God said? Don't fix that phone because we understand your courage in this fight. And then they gave me a customized necklace and a bracelet to match. The gods did this. Then I see my mama. And she's laughing. We giggling. I had an extra chain. I was gonna give it to her. But she was in she was in she was, no, she was in a different vibe frequency, right? So I'm like, alright. The the little boy in me got a little mech. Yo, man, just five seconds. I had a little boy moment. Uh, I'm gonna keep it because she you know. But then I was like, nah. I'm give it to us, my mama. Lo and behold, the next day. Good morning, son. Good morning, mama. What's going cool? on? What's going cool with you, babe? Boo, Because when I talk to my mom, people think I'm talking to her like that's my woman. No. I call my mom, babe, honey. Yeah, because she's been called bitches and all this out of her name far too long. She don't need another man calling her no, nothing else other than things that she needs to make her heart feel good. That's why I talk to all you women like that. I don't give a fuck if you married or not. I don't give a fuck if you got a million husbands and niggas. I'm going to talk to my sisters like that. Your wife is my sister. Your daughter is my sister. So, yeah, wait, what's up, babe? You okay? Like, really, like, like uh, I see y'all wives and y'all daughters, like, they are actually literally my blood. They are my blood. I'm going to tell you how I know. Because there's life in the blood. And as long as they're living, we blood tie. Blood in, blood out. So I love all y'all wives, brothers, all y'all sisters and moms, because they like mine too. That's why I don't lie to y'all on this thing. Straight up. Or even when I go out in the streets, I don't, I don't do no lying. I don't do the, that fake shit, man. I don't buy jewelry or nothing like that because I want to look fly. These are gifts of the Spirit. These are gifts of the people who recognize the Spirit and saying, hey, the spirit always looks and feels good because when that spirit comes past, with or without jewelry and glasses and all that funny shit, it's still the raw material. Ain't nothing like raw material. I don't chit chatter. Morning monkeys and parrots. So the story with this heart, the next day, I see my mom get in the car. I was gonna, I was gonna give her the chain anyway. But she started talking about a heart that my little brother uh, he gave her, and the chain broke, and she can't find the chain, or something happened, and she's been thinking about this heart. For some reason, I got a picture. Something put a picture in my heart. I think it was my little brother. I, I'm not. Right now in the Bible, what's been written in the Bible versus what's my experience right now. And some of you might be more advanced in this than I am. I'm one of those that still have some of that Bible residue in me. Where it says, when you go looking for answers, when you're going to look for, to the, for, to, for the future, or if I'm going to go look for finding what's going to happen in the next three hours, <laughs> Is an abomination. But if it happened, and I say, Father, can I go find out what happened? And he sends me to a tarot card reader. I say, Father, I need to know what happened. And then he gives me permission to go to hell or see a demon or a witch or a warlock or a Satanist or a Kabbalahist. Then I have permission to go and get the information and get the fuck out. Don't go there and sit there and sit at the church like I'm watching TV and be mesmerized. You go in there, you get your answers, and you get the fuck out. And so that's what I did here in Pittsburgh. I got Southern Hill of Pittsburgh. Let me tell you what happened. In my heart, when I left Pittsburgh, I said I was never coming back here. I was never going to come back to Pittsburgh and talk to none of you niggas. And I meant that in my heart and soul. And somebody said, uh, uh that ain't in your hands. Straight up. 
So I want to tell you people here in Pittsburgh and across the whole planet. I don't like you no more than you like me. I didn't choose to do this. I didn't wake up one day and say, hey, you know what? Hey, how about I become a false teacher like everybody else and do it for free? I just want to, I just want people to just hear me because I'm so fucking lonely. I'm such an ugly person in my heart and I got no skills and I'm so lonely. I'm so ugly and sad that I, I need attention from people I don't even fucking know. Sucks to be you, man. You the broke nigga for real. Thinking that people get on here, well, I'm saying they don't. But this person don't. I didn't ask for this. And if you really want to get to know me, you'll go to my Facebook page, I mean my YouTube page, and you'll go all the way to my, I got a thousand videos, I should have about 3,000 videos on YouTube, I think they just said, fuck, this nigga got too many. <laughs> Dude, I think I had the most videos on YouTube in history, I, 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 I think I do. Because I should do five videos a day. Way, years ago, years, this ain't shit. These eight hour videos, Man, I used to have like four or five of them, or three or four of them, plus a couple, man, it was a whole bunch. Morning monkeys and parrots, I don't chit chat. So, my mom mentions this heart. Says, I gave up, put the chain on her neck, that they did me, on her neck. And I said, put the heart on the chain. Do you know the earlier that later on that day, I go up to the store to go buy something else. I would go buy something, and this heart was put in my head for heart of a lion. So, I didn't go out here and do this. These were spirit led. So, I don't let my chains hang before I let my nuts hang. If you can't let your nuts hang first, don't let this swing. Cause we'll strip this off your neck. Cut your balls off and stick it in your mouth. I'm just, I'm just saying. That's where we're at right now. You can play master teacher and prophet all you want to and let these chains get you fucked up. Let these rings and jewelry and stuff, glasses and the fashion and Gucci and guest cologne and all the little fancy shit and designer animals. And don't let that get you fucked up. Especially when it's coming from man and your ego and your vanity. You hear me, monkey? The parrots and King Kong, lions with no fangs, tigers with no claws, dogs with no barks, no with no bites. Come on, man! It's the shit that comes out of some of y'all mouth on this on this internet shit, man. Like this is ridiculous. And, and, and y'all always say this is a hood code. Money don't make the man, man make the money. I, we can't tell. Especially through the females. Especially through your women, through your daughters, through your mom, through your cousins, through your nieces and nephews. We can't tell that the money didn't make you. Because the only reason why your family fuck with you is because you depend on your outer perspective. You, you depend on this electricity, this electron. But when that shit go off, yeah, see my off is on. Now I'm back on. Off. What's up? I'm back on. So my light is off. And my light is off. Your light is on. Your light of ignorance is bright. I turned that shit off. It'll make sense later. 
So I'm going to put you in this days of Noah. And I want you to pay close attention while we make this video. Future wife. Spirits. Whatever's going on. I don't know shit. But I thank y'all for the spiritual gifts. Uh, it was definitely well earned. I, I appreciate you. Cause I, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't think about this stuff. So I just wanted to say publicly thank you. Uh, Cause the spirits is in these computers. The spirits is in the internet. I'm watching y'all like y'all watching me, and we want to see. I'm like you guys. We want to see people live in the spirit while being dressed in dust or electron. Example. You know, you know, light. Oh, what's that? Oh. Everybody know that light sheds dust like a snake sheds its skin. That's why the pharaohs have the cobra on their head. One, the, the represents the characteristic of a cobra, and two, because it what sheds its skin it means rebirth, renewal of the characteristics of a cobra. Just because the cobra's on the helmet of a pharaoh doesn't mean he's a wonderful person. If you look at the, if you research the characteristics of a cobra and then understand that it sheds its skin, then that's the type of light that you live under. That's the devil's mark. The characteristic of a cobra. See if I can get that for you. What does a cobra do? What does a king cobra do? Although the king cobra is undoubtedly a very dangerous snake, so even though the pharaohs are a very dangerous snake, even though their wisdom in their forehead is a very dangerous snake, it prefers to escape unless it is provoked. So, even though the pharaoh is dangerous, the pharaoh don't mind being at peace, as long as you don't provoke him. The serpent don't don't provoke his pineal gland. Don't provoke his mental. Don't provoke this up here. Don't provoke his mental power in the heavens, which is his brain, and on earth, which is under his feet. Don't provoke him. This cobra characteristics in this man or woman who is a pharaoh or a governor over a bunch of people called eggs or little reptiles. Because they think like who? The governor or the reptile or the representative or the representation of them. Now, how we know? Because despite its aggressive reputation, see? Despite its aggressive reputation. So that means the pharaoh is aggressive. The governor is, is aggressive. Egypt is aggressive. The black man, the black woman is aggressive. Despite your aggressive reputation, comma, the King Cobra is actually more cautious than many smaller niggas. He's cautious. The Cobra only attacks people, his own, other governors, other snakes, other little snakes, other little niggas and bitches, other little monkeys and parrots. 
when it's corner in, corner comma, and self-defense or to protect its young. The only time a nigga protect themselves if it's cornered in, like being when the TV tells you that the black man is being murdered. The only time black people come come together because now, as a whole, when one snake is killed, right, it only attacks the government or other nations or other people because now the snake or the cobra people, the Egyptian or the African American thinks that they're cornered in as, oh, they're attacking all black people. Through one snake, we call uh, people black people getting murdered. These are little snakes to a bigger governors or what? Cobras in society. How we know? Because it says the only time the black man and black woman want to march, only time the black man and black woman want to get involved, uh, let's get it, let's get it, is when you're cornered in. When you ain't cornered in, government, the same government that you want to fight and tell everybody you don't be killing us, as long as you're not cornered in, you go to the police. Hi, Mr. Policeman. Hi, Mr. Governor. Hi, Mr. Politician. Hi, Mr. Social Worker. Hi, Mr. Can I lick your, your booty? Yeah, your snake tongue. And you go to the club, you do the same thing to each other. Licky, sucky, sucky. Come on, man. And then you, and other, other, another time you attack people is when you're protecting other little snakes like you. Only time you act is if you as a whole is cornered in, if one person or one little snake gets murdered. One little snake. Not a dragon, but a little snake. You attack. And if your other little snakes, like your baby snakes, your little reptilian babies, only two things that move the black man and the black woman. We're talking about your pineal gland. We're talking about your third eye that you always talk. Yeah, my third eye, man. Shut the fuck up, you little snake. You little serpent. You little little teeny, teeny, teeny serpent. I got gold. I got money. But guess what? In your pineal gland, in the celestial world, when all this is fucking gone, you're a little fucking worm. You're not a book dragon. You're a fucking bookworm. What is, what is a bookworm to a book dragon, motherfucker? So next time one of you sassy fucking uh, uh, hyenas with your jackal talking shit about who's broke. For coming your fucking dreams and smash your little snake ass. Stop talking shit. Mind your business. Don't you got a cell phone? Don't you got a laptop? Don't you got a tablet? Read a fucking book or two. Stop reading somebody else's fucking life. Stop looking at the details of my glasses and the details. Is this real diamonds? Is this white gold or is it silver? Stop that dumbass shit. Do that to your soul. Do that to your... Look at your shit. Know this. Whatever shit that you got right now, just know there's five people. They got shit way better than you. And there's five people that got shit way worse than you. And there's ten people to the left, ten to the right, ten in front of you, and ten in the back of you that got the exact same shit you got. How the fuck you got the nerve to talk shit? You dumbass nigga. Shut the fuck up. And what make it so bad I've been doing this all my life. That's why a lot of times I don't even go around you niggas. I don't want your girl. I don't want your wife. I don't want that. One last thing I want is something that belongs to somebody else. I don't want your woman. I don't want your... I don't, listen, and females, I don't want you. Just because I give you nice little accolades and to give you hearts and that, that don't mean I fucking want you. 
And that don't mean you fucking with me. The feeling's mutual. I'm just dropping, you know, being kind and talking to people because niggas where I'm at, I can't talk to them. But we can find a, find a different conversation, at least bounce back some thoughts. I'm, I'm in there. I swimwear. I'm not here to be your man whore, black woman. I'm not here to be your fashion czar and all that extra shit. So, but, oh yeah, baby, I got, I, yeah, I got him. I'm with him. And see, I got him. You see my little trophy? I told you, girl, I got him. See? I'm not your new cell phone. I'm not your new, uh, I don't, I don't want to be your new stilettos. That nigga, you stick your feet in, stick your feet in my ass and walk all over, walk all over me. No, I don't, I'm not in line to do that. I'm not part of your Queen B Beyonce church spiritual woman demanding that while you sit up in your Queen B status, I got to be this little ass B to go out in the world, jumping from pollen to pollen, job to job, situation to situation, war to death, that's death, just to come fly back home, fly back home, and just give you all my motherfucking honey. All my, no, not my honey, my pollen. So you could turn it into honey for you. I'm a man. I'm not a bee. I'm not an insect, dummy. So I'm. Let me shoot this queen bee thing to y'all. Let me shoot this queen bee thing to y'all. I wonder if I can. I wonder if they'll let me do it. Let me see. I got another Facebook on here. We should do this Queen Bee thing, man. Check this out after the video go off. I'm not gonna be. I'm, we're not gonna be on here all all morning. Took my ass back to sleep. Okay, now we're gonna start with this. Black woman. Boom. Add another photo. Alright, we'll type in here real quick. Uh, but let's send this to y'all real quick. Let's see monkeys and parrots and read it. Uh, and we're gonna go into the days of Noah real quick. So I shot that to y'all. Y'all can see that, what I meant by this. That B shit. This is a church, a circle. Okay? Uh, monkeys and parrots. So, all you Beyonce and Jay-Z and notorious Biggie Small fans and Tupac Shakur fans who... He's the greatest of all time, the greatest GOAT. See, if you knew what you were saying, the last thing you would be calling moi, me, broke. Now, since I'm broke, ass nigga, and since I need money, since you're a good woman, and you're a good man, and you have a good life, and everything is because you're looking for a good person to share it with. Blah, 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 blah. Let's, see how, let's see how good you really are. Let's see if you're broke while you ain't got a man or whatever. Or a woman. Let's see if you're broke with, with all that money and Bentleys and houses and businesses. Let's see if you still broke. Because the last time I checked, everybody that's rich, hood rich, white rich, I don't care. Unanimously, they all say they're still miserable. So while you're 
telling people in your little dog houses and doll houses, you little niggas, niggas, and how you out here telling, telling people how they broke it, da, da, da. There's real rich, the real million billionaires. They're saying, all of them are saying together, they're miserable. How somebody who can buy whatever they want, go, wherever they, they do anything on this earth, said, they're not as happy as me. Why do millionaires and billionaires talk to a broke nigga like me and ask me, how do I find joy in life? How? Who's broke? When was the last time you had a millionaire or a billionaire ask you how to be happy? No, how to find joy. Who's broke? A future wife. Love you, whoever you are. I don't I'm single as fucks. This I am. I don't have nobody in mind but the spirit will bring you. So I just want to talk about that value part. How many of you have millionaires? Billionaires say, How do I find joy? Because in my money and in my jewelry and all my hoes, cars, and clothes, I'm not joyful. That means they're broke. They're not poor. They're broke. I'm joyful. That means I'm not broke. And if you find my joy being broke, sucks to be you. You parrot and monkey. Jesus will tell you you're an asshole because he's a titan and titus. And you put and after titan and titus, the U.S., and use the last four letters, it's anus. Tits and ass. <laughs> Read it. It's in the Bible. Jesus is titus. I mean, it's titan. And he used tits and ass to destroy the children of God. That copy case world. So let's get the days of Noah up in here for us. Bang. Let's get him in there. Okay, here we go. This might work. We want to make sure Brother Noah get his props. Research after my own heart. Big up, Brother Noah. Because Noah's telling you what's happening. And so is the days of Noah. That's why he's calling himself the days of Noah. So I highly recommend... Uh, Wherever you are, to pay attention. We highly recommend you pay attention. <sighs> Shit, wrong finger.
proclamation of the death of God marks the beginning of the modern age, the age in which science and technology have largely replaced religion Happy Sabbath. as the bodies of knowledge Please pay attention. that society depends on and lives by. A broke society. Broke, 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 broke. Was that your name? Even as far as society. The idea broke of broke the mind why you call me broke? You didn't know. Good morning. This is October 5th, 1997. I have checked four wire services, scanned eight magazines and 18 newspapers, and accessed the New York, Tokyo, and Paris databases. Here are three items you may be interested in. Detached from reality. Detached from reality. Detached from reality. We ourselves consist physically of atoms. And we know that all the atoms have their frequencies. Frequency. It is theoretically possible to pick up all of our frequencies and actually send, send us by radio. You mean we'll be able to transmit ourselves somewhere else? Yep. To, to be reconstituted in some distant place? Yep. Yeah. Go to hell mentally. Gone. Gone. I'm telling you everything you need to know about your key to the information age. The information age. The information age. Straight line. You ain't recording, are you? Straight line. That's why I told the chick. I said, I know you're recording. I know what you're doing because that's what y'all do, niggas. The revolution, the digital disc. Like all revolutions, this one took time, almost 10 years, and money. Approximately $400 million to develop. You're right. Can't go? Do this to clear out stuck poop fast. Fiber helps you poop, right? Nope. According to New York's top gut doctor, fiber just adds bulk and weight to poop. And that might sound like a good thing, but it's a lot like adding more cars to a traffic jam. Not to mention, the extra bulk from fiber can cause stuck poop to pile up and stretch out the bowels, which makes it harder to poop in the future. This creates a vicious cycle where stuck poop gets more poop to get stuck. And the longer poop sits in the colon, the more it compacts and dries out like a belly full of concrete. Eventually, it gets to the point where it's almost impossible to poop because there's so much stuck, dry poop clogging things up. At that point, doctors may try prescribing laxatives, but it's usually too little, too late. That's why some hospitals have special vacuums to remove stuck poop. But in more serious cases, doctors will simply resort to a gloved hand and a bucket. So if you still believe that people with healthy digestive systems simply eat fiber all the time, they don't. And if you still think they're taking laxatives, choking down psyllium, or drinking lots of water just to poop every morning, they don't. That's not the way to unclog stuck poop. There's an easier way. And it's called the seven second poop trick created by Dr. Gina Sand, a top New York City gut doctor. Have you ever wondered why some people just never seem to have digestive issues? Because I can promise you, they're not following the high fiber diets you've been told to try. And they're definitely not drinking gallons of water every single day, living on yogurt, or taking probiotics. So, What's the solution? Dr. Sam served as the director of the very prestigious Mount Sinai Gastrointestinal Motility Center for several years in New York City. She was also among the very first doctors to investigate the link between the microbiome and excess weight, and one of the very few who specialize in solving constipation for good. And now, she's going to show you her seven second morning ritual for a satisfyingly full release that anyone can do at home. So, if you're feeling backed up, if you're feeling bloated and constipated, then go ahead, 
Tap the button below this video to see Dr. Sam's seven second morning ritual now while it's still online. It's like a pressure. Is that a commercial? It's going oh, to shit. Again. My fault, y'all. Damn. I'm sorry. I thought I was part of the goddamn thing. Oh, fault. I have to die part. Of suspicious and resentful of those people who tried to tell him that all was not well in the world. Or isn't this the way to sum up the study of It depends on you and me how the future will sum it up. We are now, by our commitments and our evasions, writing that statement for the future historian to decipher. Decipher. Okay. Keyword, decipher. As an idealist, you believe in the power of darkness as a superstition. Now there you are wrong. The power of darkness is more than just a superstition. It is a living force which can be tapped at any given moment of the night. Mm. We're tapping into the light force that's in the night. See, cause the the light can't, the darkness can't comprehend the light. So, they'll be upset right now. I watched Daisy Noah to get a confirmation. Get a confirmation. Got a confirmation. Now it's confirmed. Got it confirmed. I found a confirmation to the video of yesterday, and the day before, the day before, that 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 the day before, the day before, that it's been confirmed, the day before, that it's been confirmed, the day before, that through the days of Noah, it's been confirmed before, that it's been Confirm the day for that. Uh, here's the confirmation from the day before that. Uh, remember the days of Noah. The fire is coming. Get him, Noah. How weird is this, Joseph? One day you go to get a vaccine, and the next you're live on national TV. <laughs> Very weird. <laughs> I understand that completely. My name is Jordan Hager. I'm the vice president of hosting here at Q2. Uh, we've been in business since 2004, headquartered out of Boston, Texas, and we've been partners with Presidio since 2012. We Presidious. provide digital solutions to banks. Look it up, Presidious. Look it up. Look the name up. Would you ever watch this? Or we will watch this, look it up. Presidious. It's Greek. In the United States, if not the world. We have, through the evolution of our company, now entered into this merger and acquisition phase where there's an assessment of build versus buy, whether we want to build a technology or if there's a technology that we think we'd be just effective in going and acquiring and adding that to our portfolio. That's a benefit. That's a plus. Right? You hear that? But some of the operational challenges that come So that means they come that buy your shit. If they ain't got it, they come buy it. And if you don't sell it, they're going to take it. Understand what he just said. If they didn't think about it, they're coming to buy it from you. And if you don't sell it, you know what's you know what's next. 
Come on. The data center to really to the edge in which now encompasses both public, private, and private data centers. Public and private data data service. Presidio is a solutions provider. Um, was very niche to private data center and delivery. Solutions provider. Specific to things like what's your problem? Procurement, vendor selection. Um, now you vendor selection. What's your hustle? Q2 and many companies like Q2 are playing in a very hybrid space. Um, having a solutions provider that is. Uh, that's a commercial. Damn. Extending both. <laughs> Still part of the program. to the chat shout out to the mods yeah we're back some drama a bunch of drama man today's gonna be drama fine drama show everybody's talking about it everybody's concerned goodness gracious i'm gonna tell you man i can't believe the irony of it all it's fascinating how you know the ring leader himself the true Lord of the Rings, uh, Jerry Springer, the late Jerry Springer passed away. And in the same week, we get an extra dose of the super modern version of the Jerry Springer show. They killed Jerry for that. It's my belief that not only was Jerry Springer the first social media platform, but our social media platforms today are just the Jerry Springer Springer. show reincarnated. Pretty much. And in fact, what we've been witnessing over the past several days is just a spicy little episode, 2023 style. I'm seeing this whole Crowder thing just being another episode of the Jerry Springer show. Putting your business out in the street, man. What is wrong with people? Putting your business out there like that. Can you believe Bro. it? Bro! I guess we can't believe it. Shout Monkeys and Parrots. Thank you guys for being here. Shout out to everybody listening. Right. Peace and blessings to the mods, the Patreons, everybody in here. Fam, love you all. Thank you for being with us. Continuing to support this work. And showing up. And contributing to the community. And for those asking uh, the intro. Who's the lady... Look at glasses, the, the infamous Hazel Barnes, classic philosopher and teacher, one of my favorites, the infamous Hazel Barnes. Um, so let's get into this, man. Oh, goodness. Let me, let me say hello. Hello, 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 hello. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome to the Future Shock Show where things are very, very weird. A little spicy, you know, sometimes a little serious, a uh, little bit of everything you might find here. I thank you for joining. Uh, I guess for the most part here, we focus on uh, the influences of technology and media uh, on culture and the self. All right. Let's <coughs> <No. laughs> right get it in. <coughs> it's literally impossible to know what's real and what's not because these organizations and the people that work for them are untrustworthy. I think we've learned enough up until this point to be able to take this position. It isn't to say everything's fake and everything is a hoax, but you got, all I'm saying is we can't be judging these people. Well, we shouldn't be judging these people because we don't know what's going on, but Bill Engineering runs societies. They purposely hire certain people and put certain people in certain positions to sway the public opinion, to shape and manipulate judgment of the majority. <clears throat> Cass Sunstein, for instance, tap to chair who technical advisory did. And I've shown you this before in the past. I just got to remind people, this is not a game. It's not a game. It's not a game. I told y'all. As CV1I rages across the globe, the World Health Organization is asking Cass Sunstein Never. and other experts whether changing people's behavior can help save lives. 
social engineer right here hired for the job. Stupid. Now, who told you who changes lives? Let's see if I can find Proteus. I'm going to put something up real quick. Y'all can't see it. But I'm going to read something to you. Who is Proteus? All right, let me see. What does Proteus mean? Here's the definition of Proteus, a bacterium found in the intestines of animals and in the soil. Did we just see the movie about poop? A bacterium found in the intestines. That means they're poisoning you from the inside, meaning your food. The animals and the earth. Who is Proteus? Proteus, listen to this. An early sea god, noted for being versatile and capable of assuming many forms. What did do just say, y'all? What did do just say? Change forms, but hold on. What do Zeus mean? You notice I said Zeus, not Jesus. What am I gonna do Zeus? Z U E S. What does what do Zeus mean? A supreme God who became a God of humans after dethroned his father Cronus to find the what? Titans. So, Zeus dethroned God, his father, just like Satan wanted to do what? Dethroned God, his father, right? And this is where the anus this is where he became an asshole. Why? Because he tried to dethrone his father. Example. I know stuff that my dad may or may not know. And my dad sits on a throne called a pastor. And his throne as a pastor, he's in this heaven or this paradise called a church. And this church is called Petra. And in the land, in, in this place, Petra is in the land called East Hills. And it sits on top of a hill on the east side of the city. Cool. That's my blood dad. My blood father who brought me to this earth through blood and spirit. I talked to my mom through blood and spirit. Cool. But here's the part. This is a this is a true story, y'all. How you can be Jesus and not know it. How you can be this wanna be supreme nigga and nigga and want to dethrone your mother and father. So at the time, in my heart, I don't want to make my dad look bad. I don't want his church. East Hills or the congregation or the people to look or feel bad in public, first of all, nor in their heart, second of all. And for most of the part, I want the most high to get all the glory. That's the whole program. So when I type into wisdom and I ask for the spirit father and mother earth for us four to sit at the table, this is what I came up with. Hosea, do not play a supreme God like the ancient Greeks who became of gods of humans and after they tried to dethrone their what? 
father and mother on earth. It means you dishonored your mother and father. That's what it says. Honor thy mother and thy father and your days be long. Why? Because Jesus, Zeus, Cain, and a whole bunch of other motherfuckers made a religion of outdoing your father. And then getting on social media and saying, my father and my mother ain't shit. How you know? Because look at me. I look better than my... I shine better. But I, I'm a morning star. I'm a new star. I'm a, my mother and father is not stars. I'm the star. And if you look at certain pictures in, of the African American history, you'll see the child as a star. Who's going to dethrone the moon, the mother, and dethrone who? Their father by shooting guns at future mothers and fathers. So now you're in hell. Who's broke, man? So, I'm not going to get on a public display and have a debate with my father about how his foundation bettered his life from where he came from. I'm not here to cut his ankles out. The truth of the lie is between my father and his creator father, who was my creator father too. I'm not cutting the legs of a foreigner of man. I'm not going to dethrone. I'm not going to Zeus or Jesus a motherfucker. I'm not going to religionize a motherfucker. I'm not going to relegion. I'm not going to go back and legion myself with one of the dishonor my mother and father. The ones in the past, the ones right now, nor in the future. Because it's Zeus defeated. And how do he feed it now? What is Zeus? I did According the to the guides at the Westport Library, Zeus, in ancient Greek religion, chief deity of the Pantheon, a sky and weather god who was identical with the Roman god Jupiter. What brought me, and this one even ties me into it for us in the spiritual aspect. My last name is Weathers. I live in the sky. I keep my mind in the sky. I think limitless. I think globally. I think universal. I think galactically. I lived. I, what you're reading, this is this is where I'm comfortable at. So I can identify with that type of frequency about being the custodian of the planet and overstand the position of Mother Earth. Literally, the position. Of Mother Earth in the universe. What does Zeus do? According to LibGuides at the Westport Library, Zeus was regarded as the center of thunder and lightning, rain and winds, and his traditional weapon was the thunderbolt. He was called the father of both gods and men. Now check this out. Guess who takes? Guess who gives Zeus the thunderbolt? Guess you give Jesus his Holy Spirit. Spirit and lightning, thunderbolt, or synonymous to spirit. Like twin flames. Thunder, lightning is a fire just like twin flames is a fire. Peep game. What does Prometheus mean? won't tell us. Listen to what Prometheus mean. One of the titans of Theobald Cronus and Pro, uh, Proteus is up there with them. So this is the fallen angel. These are the fallen one. Proteus and Prometheus are the fallen angels. Cronus is their version of the creator of the Most High Yah. And in their, in their disobedience, they paint the picture as, as Cronus is eating his children. But meanwhile, that's the most high punishing Prometheus and Proteus. That's the future teachings. 
but they're gonna have to start donating more. Straight up. They're gonna start putting y'all money in the broke niggas poor pockets. Straight up. That's what's coming this year. You're gonna start putting money in the broke poor niggas pockets. Since I'm so broke and poor and you copying my shit, following my spirit, you're going through all this to hate me. You're going through all this to make sure I'm not what I'm not. You're going through all this to prove I'm not what I'm not. You're going through all this to make sure I'm not what I'm not. You're going through all this so you can keep your whatever. You're going through all this so you can keep your fake shine. You're going through all this to talk and bite me behind my back. And obviously you're still losing. How's that, how does that work for you lately? How does it work for you being a beautiful loser? With all that gold decked in beauty, a Luciferians, how does it feel to be beautiful and bright and all the music and all the world and still be a loser? The supreme trickster, a god of what? Tricking, a tricking spirit. So if I want to trick you, I have to what, put a mask on called makeup, mascara. I got to paint a beard. I got to paint my mustache. I got to put socks in my pants so it looks like I got a big dick. I got to buy new titties, new hair, new fingernails. Why? Because of my asshole. I like kissing the devil's ass. And because I'm a living, breathing anus. How? Because I believe in the titans and ands. And I believe in the Ark of Titus that destroyed the children of God. So yeah, Titus and Titans is tits and ass. Keep playing this video over and over again, and then you'll find out who's the broke nigga. And then when you find out that you're the broke nigga, your apology should have some dollar signs, some gold, diamonds, something constructive to say when the sun come up today. And forever. Shut the fuck up. Summoning my spirit. You take yourself divine and try to make it personal. Shut the fuck up. You trickster. You got a false light. You got a fire with no smoke. You sulfur. His intellectual side was emphasized by the apparent meaning of his name. What? A trickster. You going to the prom? Yes. You going to take me to the prom? Yes. Prometheus. Prom atheist. What is it? Atheist. What's that? Atheist. While while we at it. Atheist. What's what's an atheist? Oh, it's an atheistic motherfucker. It's an enthusiasm motherfucker. Let's see. Atheist. The root word for atheistic. What is that? Atheist. Uh, it must be a word. Look at that. Atheist. The name and Prometheus. Wow. Who would have known? Who would have known? Atheists, specimens, Sierra Leone, black people, dinner, black people. Who? Prometheus, the trickster of black people, the trickster of the aborigines, the trickster of what? His religion is to trick you into worshiping and kissing ass and tits. What do Prometheus do? Define the Libyan gods by stealing fire. What? The lightning bolt. He gave it to Zeus, Jesus. Giving it to who? Humanity. Jesus. In the form of technology. What? Magic. Magic is a technology. Knowledge of this technology or the science of what? Religion, technology, fire, lightning, weather systems, NASA, 
rockets, spaceships, and more generally, civilization. Who civilized these niggas? The Moors always say that. We civilized the white man. Dr. Yakub, he created the white man. No, the fuck you didn't. You devil. You liar. You trickster. Nation of Islam. Not the people. But the scholarship. All religion come from this. Monkeys in prayer. This is just idle chit chatter. Now. Prometheus. There was a question I asked. Oh. Can Zeus shape shift? Whenever Zeus needs to abduct someone in a hurry, this was his go-to method. A nymph Greece was abducted by Zeus in the shape of an eagle. Is America an eagle or not? How does he abduct the black man and the black woman? By tricking Jesus, telling you God is Jesus. You see what I'm saying? There'll be the next presentation later on today. I just want to put that in y'all mental notes. Give you something to think about when the sun come up. See, this is what the Most High Yah was doing in the when he was making the primordial darkness. He was already in the light or the dawn of self-awareness. And he took a fragment of that self-awareness and he made what we call consciousness or the light of life. That's the light of life. The light of life is different from the breath of life and the walk of life in the creation. Oh, you hear that life talk? You hear that life-giving river flow? You hear that life-giving frequency? Oh, I think you're broke from that. I think you're broke from the life-giving waters. Matter of fact, you're so broke, you're stuck in the brook. And you're stuck in Shit's Creek without a paddle. And you're too much of a coward, cold-hearted, degenerate, de everlasting De-evolved uh, de breathing specimen. So technically, you're a lab rat. You're a lab rat. If all the demons and angels and demigods and men and women was up on a level above Earth. All of you suffer maybe 1%. And 10% of that 1% will look up and watch you all as flying monkeys. And that's in the spirit. We don't care what you dress your physical body like. We don't care if you have a condom on or not. We don't care if you have a hat on your head or not. We don't care if you have fingernails or not. The fact that we look down, you're a bunch of, you're copying nature. You're not maintaining nature. You're not monitoring nature, making sure nature is intact. Instead of watching the movie, you jumped into the goddamn movie. The Mosa said, I made creation for you to enjoy. You got into the fucking creation. So who's going to enjoy creation? There's nobody to watch over creation. Why? Because you got into it. Meaning, you left your home. You left your gift. The gift was to watch over God's creation. Let's get back to days of Noah. Let's finish, let's, let's finish, let, let, let bro finish talking. And we'll close it out.
excuse me, Mr. Social Engineer, how can we make people trust the science? Oh, well, let me write you up a little program up, uh, here. What did you think we saw from March 2022? Whenever it, it started to end. Yeah, man. The program. Just one example. I'm just saying. Let's continue here. Let's continue. Now. Yeah, I'm not showing that. I'm not showing that. So <laughs> let's 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 talk about let's relate this thing. Let's let's kind of combine this here with the Jerry. Jerry, Jerry, Jerry. Yeah, man. I got to admit, you know, I was a big fan of the Jerry Springer show. It was a whole lot of mess that was very entertaining, especially for a young buck. Because I was a young buck around these times. I think I might have been in middle school. Seventh, eighth grade. I think that was like the time I was really watching Jerry Springer. Jerry Springer, influential U.S. talk show host, dies at age 79. Family of, fame, family of famed TV figure and former mayor of Cincinnati announces he died peacefully at home in Chicago on Thursday. That's, you know, I just want to say, I don't want to be disrespectful, you know. R.I.P. and all of that, um, but we gotta we gotta talk about it because uh, this guy's work and and I mean we have to we have to admit these things. This guy's work, in my view, was part of a some say sacrifice. You never know. You never know. Oh, what? But I do believe his work had a lot to do. With the postmodern slash supermodern transition into soon just they figure out what's really mass going on, degeneracy that we're seeing today. Useful. Like I said, I believe Jerry Springer was them. the first social they media never... platform. Now, there was others, Ricky Lake, Je Jenny Jones. But there was something special about Jerry. Let me tell you something about the spirit of Jerry Springer. If you look like you look, you listen to his name. His name is Jerry Springer. Who else is named Springer? Take a wild guess. Who else's name is Springer and where do he live? Time out. I'm going to shoot one in the dark, y'all. I'm going to shoot one in the dark. Jerry Springer's dead. What do this word, why do Springer jump out? Why do Jerry Springer jump out? And I'm listening to Tom and Jerry and geriatrics, medicine, the Jerry Kid Show. Tom and Jerry, geriatrics, Jer Jerry's. Can you look at the back of it? This is my way. Jerry Springer. Springer. Turn it into a cartoon. Let me give you a hint. Turn Jerry Springer into a cartoon. Something's telling me to uh, see Simpsons and Mr. Burns and Springfield. We'll try something. Why do Jerry and Mr. Byrne live in, in Springfield? Hold on. Why do Jerry Springer and Mr. Burns live in Springfield? No. J 
Jerry Springer and Mr. Burns. Jerry Springer, I told you. I told you. I Look, look, I'm going to shoot this to y'all. I'm going to shoot this to y'all. This is the spirit. I'm going to earn my motherfucking value. I don't need nothing for free. I want to shit for free. I earns my key. Check this out. Ah. I'm going to shoot this to y'all. I hope I can get it in. Hey, y'all, this is going to freak y'all out. Yo, tell me this is going to freak y'all out. Tell you. I'm telling you. Uh, Y'all can't see what I'm looking at. But something about Springfield and Jerry Springer. Mr. Burns. Something about Springfield. We go back to the camera. Look it up, y'all. I'm going to go back to... I'm not doing this... I, I wish y'all would have... Something told me to do a... Uh, you know what? That's going to be part two. How did... What did they do to Jerry Springer? And it's on The Simpsons. It's a story about Jerry Springer... Ah, I think I found it. I think I found it. Hold on, y'all. I'm going to share it with y'all. I think I found what was going on. I think I found it. I think I found out what's going on. It's in the story. See, what happens is this. A parrot, no, monkey, okay? You have to understand, Neanderthals are real. Yoshlings are real, y'all. Look, let's go. Let's go push your mind back. I'm gonna shoot y'all the video. I'm gonna shoot y'all the pictures, and let the spirit guide you. Let the spirit guide you. I'm gonna shoot y'all these pictures. I'm gonna shoot you these pictures. Let the spirit guide you.
Hold on, y'all. I'm doing something real quick. Come and see you the photo. This is called the Unholy Crescent. And Sun Cult. That's what it's called. I got three photos. Now, when I see you these photos, look at the look at the characters and let the characters talk to you. Don't use your nigga mind. Don't use your black mind. Don't use your African American mind. Don't use your, this is what somebody taught me, brain. Don't use your fucking logic because it ain't going to work. And if you're not spiritually connected, then don't even waste your fucking time and then go back and say, oh, well, this ain't this and it. No. You want to use your old your usual brain because if you was if you wasn't using your usual brain then you would be doing what i'm doing at this very moment you will be sending photos and information like i'm sending right now okay like i'm sending right now so if that's you shut the fuck up and chill out but to the other people who are respectful and open-minded, I love you for your attention. Check it out. You, whoever, whoever you are, you know something ain't right. Period. As soon as you wake up, you're like, man, I gotta go to work. I gotta do this. All right, cool. I got me. But no soon as I go outside to do me, There's nothing but obstacles between the big-headed rich and the big-headed bum, between the big-headed rich by hyena to the big-headed prostitute. That's a lot of hurdles. We just mentioned four things. I'm going to shoot that and shut up. Boom. You hear that come? The unholy crescent and some cult. Check that photo out. All right. Boom. Uh, I don't have, I can't see the chat. So if you have a question, I'll be more than glad to uh, answer them. So let me go ahead, put this manure back on. But that Mr. Burns, Jerry Springer, that wrong button. Special about Jerry Springer, he was the most popular, he was endearing, likable, funny, charismatic, and boy did he have some weird stuff going on that stage, something yeah. that people have never seen before. Yeah. Now, there were there were other shows prior to him, uh, I can't remember the guy's name, but he was along these lines, he would be smoking cigarettes all the time, I can't remember his name, I was a kid and I remember watching that show, which was very like a, like a a prototype version of Jerry Springer. Yeah, Sally Jesse. Yep. Question. Yep. Uh, garbage in, garbage out. Yep, there we go. You guys remember who that guy was? You always smoking them damn cigarettes back in the day, back in the 80s, you know, when you could smoke smoke inside. I remember those days. Right. Downey, there we go. Mor Morton Downey. Thank you, Carlos. Thank you, Joe. Oh, yeah, Morton Downey Jr. Yeah. Yeah. This was a radio version of this. Sure. Yeah, I remember Montel. I remember Montel. I wasn't a huge fan of Montel. Kind of corny, but I did watch it. I watched them all. Well, Donnie <laughs> okay. Jr. would be the epitome of uh, Gerald, social media. Gerald, Geraldo, of course. He goes back. He he was doing stuff. I have clips of him doing stuff in the 70s. Yeah, I think yeah, it's as early as 75. Yeah. We know, the, we know the beginnings of this. <clears throat> Let's talk about it. 
Let's talk about it. Yeah, we got we got a lot to talk about here. So, um, towards my notes, let me get down to this. We're done with today, y'all. Jerry Springer. The battles in the sky. Listen. Foreshadow the 21st century degenerate cultural norms I have written in my notes here. Degenerate. Because, you know, when I go back and look at some of these episodes, that's why I said Twitter is like modern day Jerry Springer show. If you go on Twitter, it ain't no different. It's the same stuff. It's just, you know, modernized a bit. What is a garbage pill kid? He foreshadowed 21st century degenerate cultural norms because now the stuff we would see on Jerry Springer that was really strange. Yeah, Phil Donahue. He was great. He had some really good shows. I enjoyed it. Was, it was a little more intellectual. It was a little more real. You know, a little more po political. A lot more political. It was more legitimate, I'd say, Phil Donahue. Probably the best of them all with regard to, I guess, the, the sub substantive nature of it all. Dr. Phil, come on now. <laughs> demoralizing, Rachel. I got that in the notes. We're going to get there. Demoralizing. It's a demoralizing program. Uh, and, he, and it was strange. The daytime programming, and I have written in my notes, targeting stay-at-home mothers and, and elderly that, that would be home watching TV during the day. And it's like this programming of the older generation, uh, whilst programming the younger generation, especially those of us staying homesick from school, you know. You always watch them, Jerry. I remember my routine was The Price is Right. And then there would be that one show where you like go in the supermarket and you're, you're going around and you're trying to get all the items. I can't remember the name, but that was one of my favorites. Oh, I loved Arsenio Hall. That was a later, late night show, though, from what I remember. But I loved Arsenio. He was more focused on music culture and, and politics, I think, and, and Hollywood and stuff. That was a good one. But yeah, uh, and then there was Jerry, and then uh, there were so many of these shows. What, what used to come after, come on after Jerry? Goodness, should have wrote that down. Supermarket Sweep, yeah. <laughs> I used to love that show, man. Yeah, man. These were great shows. These were fun. But for me, I look at these shows, uh, talk shows, gaming shows, as the proto-social media. Let me let me pull it up for you. What do the answers call a bully yeah, goat? Just, just my my perspective, you know. I'm not saying this is absolutely true. And just to throw it out here, um, what does the ancient call a bully goat? Carl Benjamin Sargon of Akkad. He had uh, something to say. Richard Bay. Oh man, I used to love Richard. You have the game shows and like, you know, get messy and nasty and silly. I, I like Richard Bay because he was so silly, just ridiculous. Right, just pure ridiculous. Uh, hey, Carl Benjamin said, hey. "Am I the only person who thought Jerry Springer was actually a total scumbag who exploited an underclass of people who needed help for his own enrichment, whilst destroying the dignity of American society in the process?" You know, I can't disagree with that perspective, even though I enjoyed the show. Man, there's facts there, and if for those that been around here since the early days. Since 2016, you'll remember, it's probably only a couple of you in here, but uh, my second video, I think, was about daytime television, especially uh, day daytime uh, talk shows. And I was making this claim that talk shows had a lot to do with this new degenerate culture at being, uh, in a sense, part of the enculturating process. And I was focusing on, in that video in 2016, I was focusing specifically on how Jerry Springer introduced, or should we say, normalized transsexuality and the mixing of, of man and woman in relation, relationships in a way that was seemed almost normal because he had so many shows of this. I remember it was a pretty long talk, too. I remember back then I would just show pictures and talk and, you know, we'd have cameras and all that stuff back then. But I remember that might have been my second video and it was a, precisely about this kind of scenario. So it's interesting how all of this is happening now. But yeah, I, I think I think Benjamin got a point here. I really do. Um, and so I look at it like this. Proto-social media, right? Uh, platforming the common folk, daytime talk shows and gaming shows. Now, some of it was innocent. A lot of it was innocent and fun when we think about what we see today. <laughs> you know, uh, 
Oh yeah, Gumby and Pokey. That I, I would always come on when I was sick. I remember that. Yeah, definitely. And that gnome. What's his name? Something the gnome, the little gnome guy. I remember. It. Man, just thinking about those shows gives you a little feeling inside. It's it's hard to explain. Uh, yeah, and it goes back to the 60s, 70s. Yeah, every decade, you know, every era had its, you know, I like to go back to the, the beat generation as kind of the, the real beginning. But yeah, you know, every generation has their programming for sure. <clears throat> yeah, Maury kind of took it, and took the torch and ran with it. You know, you, you are not the father, <laughs> you know, that old thing. Really exploitative. All of these shows, very exploitative. Um, but yeah, proto-social media platforming the common folk. So I look at it, I look at social media in general is common folk platform where we get to express ourselves, communicate. It's much different in that we're actually getting to communicate opposed to uh, this more centralized example of us sitting behind screens and, and enjoying the show detached from each other, but still experiencing normal everyday people uh, to the degree that these people on these shows almost become somewhat of celebrities for 15 minutes or so, right? Very, very interesting. Um, how this is all coming up, coming about, and for me, it was just fascinating to see uh, uh, to see this this um, the passing away of of the ring leader, the true Lord of the Rings, you know, Jerry Springer. And at the same time, we get a, a very fresh uh, Jerry Springer episode with the Crowder situation, and it's so Jerry Springer because every especially on Twitter, man, everyone's putting out their perspective on it, showing this clip and eating it up you got some people that really don't like crowder just eating this up and loving it and digging the knife in deep and a lot of people are going after crowder it's just kind of crazy it's like what is going on man it's just like y'all just bored do you find this stuff interesting really is this all you got going on you'd be amazed how this is trending so hard because i know people love drama i know i know how it works man but gosh man come on this stuff is just too much. And then, uh, you know, you got the whole Twitter thing. And Elon Musk. Elon Musk is kind of like, he's like a modern-day Jerry Springer hosting the, the, the Twitter fiasco. Uh, just egging it all on, right? It's just fascinating how all of this is working. Let me show you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. As if, as if he came to save the day, but he's just, he's like, ever since, ever since uh, Elon's taking control of Twitter, it's become like a hellhole. It's just a cesspool, man. It's so, it's so much drama and chaos on that application, man. It's, they're literally building up this type of uh, crisis, war crisis of sorts between left and right, black and white. It's just, it's real, real deal agitation propaganda out of, uh, out of an application, you know crazy absolutely crazy and and then there's like everybody everybody seems well not everybody but a lot of people are sad you know a lot of people are sad that this had to happen and it just reminds me of you know they just got their head down and you know it's just like damn you know he's gone you know it's like the end of an era right the the end of an era oh no what are we gonna do just thinking back all the memories I like it, yep, it's mine The price is blow my mind I feel so rich, oh yeah I feel like a billionaire I'm chopping like a billionaire I'm chopping like a billionaire got to start over a fresh start man you know it's it's the last episode it's it's over it's done it's finished you know it's i i can't help but feel a little bit of that as far as the nostalgia goes but it's very surface you know i'm not really tripping but you'd be surprised how many people on the social media are just like crying like oh no i'm miss oh miss that man you ain't even heard from that man in years what are you talking about weird this is weird all of you guys weird with this stuff you just love the drama you just simpletons oh you simple ones how you love 
the simple cells. So listen, okay, Crowder. We think about Springer. What does Springer put on the table for the most part? Uh, tragedy, crisis, relating crises, uh, deception, right? A lot of deception, a divorce, right? A whole lot of madness. I think for me, when I think of divorce, it really started to ramp up in the 70s, right? Especially divorce law, the change of the legal system with regard to marriage, uh, the change in perspective of, of what a marriage is, especially the relationships between man and woman. And we look at, say, the uh, some of the social programs that contributed to, I guess, singlehood. Oh, you like the shirt, Ashana? Yeah, all praises to the Most High. Wow. Got them in the merch store if anyone's interested. We got plenty of stuff, plenty of stuff. In there for you. <coughs> Just have them, have them you know what? I got to stop this. We're going to start this over. I got to show y'all this. I, 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 it'd be, I, I, I don't know what else to do. Uh, I think of films too, not just I shows, show um, not just politics and culture, and, but I think of uh, Hollywood, for instance. And one film, yeah, Promiscuity for sure, Corey. Good to see you, by the way. Shout out to Shawana. Sad facts. Sad facts. Right after the civil rights movements, like culturally speaking, the end of the civil rights movement, but this burgeoning sexual revolution, followed by, of course, the, the rainbow revolution, um, and the breaking up of the family, the falling away of, of traditions, right, and, and stabilizing processes like faith, etc. Uh, <clears throat> all of these things started to happen, and it was from that point where technology started to really, really develop it at a high speed velocity, uh, especially during the 80s with the personal computer, and then we get gaming, right? So I always look at, I always uh, look at the implementation the and diffusion of technology in a given era. I look at the spirit came. We're gonna close this out. Enough of idle chit chatter. Let's get back to what I'm supposed to do. I want to pause to deliver to you. Stay tuned. Give me 15 minutes. This is going to blow your fucking mind into so many fragments. This is going to break your shit down. You're not going to have no choice but to cry on your knees and say, God, I need you because I don't know what the fuck is real no more. See, this is the problem with people who's not going to ever watch this video or any of our videos, especially the most recent ones. They'll kill themselves. So instead of killing themselves in public, they, they, there's, there's a stewing, a brewing, not a Hebrew, but a brewing to where You'll be around people that'll so be busy being will so busy being melted and tortured that there won't be no time of being oh shit you're ugly look at you there won't be no time for um, you won't be thinking about how bad or good you got it compared to being tortured meaning when you call me broke you have time to think about what's good and bad in my life. And not taking care of your own business. Now in the spirit world. <clears throat> you won't have that time. Because. You'll be too busy. Spending a whole lot of time. Living. Away from the most high. Now whatever that is. I don't even want to try to think about it. Because it's not my life. If that makes sense. I've never eaten that type of fruit before. And if I did. I spit it out my mouth. Like I just did all of you here in Pittsburgh. I never knew you. You never knew me. We was never cool. We was never Tahiti. 
We were never copacetic. We was never none of the intellectual OGA for Afro-Asiatic link, link, linguistics. You niggas always fuck, bitch, get that money, sell these drugs, and kill this nigga, set him up. That was y'all language. That's why y'all don't know what Tahiti means, and copacetic. And why, and the real nature of Nami and Waka. <sighs> Tribal language versus monkey, the nigga language. We're going to show that to you. This is monkey morning. Monkeys and parrots. And you can't focus here, Omar. Saying peace. Good day. I hope everybody's all right. But I got to show y'all this, man. Please come back. You will, not, you will not be disappointed, especially if you up, nigga. Especially you trying to decide whether you should go to church or not. Let us help you. We're not planting seeds of deception. We're planting seeds of different perceptions. Things that make you go, hmm. Things that should things that should make you want to go investigate for yourself. Not cause I said it, not cause I think it's right or wrong to go to bed, because it's a hmm, in your whole in your heart. So that when you are when so you wanna know what really sits on your heart. See, cause they say don't nobody know the deepest pits of, of your heart but the most high. You know why the most high knows the deepest parts of your heart? Because the most high is not sitting there. That's how you know. Not so much that he created it. It was the fact that when he created it, he gave it to you. Hands off. But since he don't sit on the throne of your heart. Hands off. Mask off. You're naked now. So let me just show you what you're naked in this segment. So we're gonna hang this up. I wanna tell you I love you. But I, you know, we just idle chit chatter. Cause y'all get these frequencies. I'm looking at people, I'm going to places. You know, I'm a I'm, a, I'm a, I bleed and get cut, get hit, hurt, like everybody else. I don't know about you. I'm tired of bleeding. I'm tired of getting hit by cars and falling and that shit hurt, man. Rejuvenating hurts. I don't care you rejuvenating for good or bad or this or that. This person here, this guy here, that shit hurt. I don't promote getting hurt and then healing and saying, ha ha, I'm a superhero. Fuck you. That shit hurt. But it lets me know I'm a fucking man, a human being like the rest of you, and I ain't got wings and I don't run fast like Nike and all that other shit you see. On no. That's not reality. Fuck. I guess it's time to put it down. It went out twice. Got the hint. Where's my water at? I got the hint, right? Uh, so I want to tell you I care about your man. I love you. Uh, 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 um. Let's just get to the next segment. All right? Keep it tight. Shalom.